Let's get to Chuck's email questions real quick. Got only about five or six slides here. This is an interesting one. Now, Chuck has been asked to make a presentation on option trading for a software company. His first task is to correct some of what I think has been incorrect information dished out by another presenter. I don't like to speak against other presenters, but we're going to take a look at this. But he hates to be wrong. I do too. I don't want to go in with false information. That presenter continuously says, if volatility is high, it means the stock price is going to go up. If volatility is low, it means the stock price is going down. I mean, it'd be nice if it was that easy. Yeah, it's not that easy. Chuck goes on to say, I feel that there's no way for that statement to be even close to be correct. I would appreciate your comment either in today's webinar or just a reply to my email. We decided to do it today in the webinar. Upon or not, we're here. Um, Chuck's inkling, as is mine, is to say that high volatility means that the market anticipates that the price is likely to move either because of the nature of the stock or an event coming up, which could be up or down between now and expiration. And that lower volatility means that the stock is more stable and it's going to move up and down based on what the market's doing and what's the stock doing. I'd added that in there. That's sort of my thoughts. Low volatility usually means a safer play, naturally less movement, less fluctuation. Anything can happen. It does not mean the stock's going down. Seeing a high volatility does not mean the stock's going up. But let's clear some of this up a little bit. What are we talking about with high volatility? Are we talking about the volatility of the stock itself? A 20-day, 50-day, 100-day volatility? Or are we talking about implied volatility of the options on that particular stock? Either way, to me, it's the same. Okay, and here's what I mean by that. Neat tool on power options. When you're on power options, we'll take a look at this later when we go there. When you're, you can click on Learning Center. There's a link in the Learning Center for market activity. And in the market activity menu, there's one for optionable stock statistics. This shows you the average, the mean, the minimum, and the max of just about every stock and option criteria that we show on power options. I've truncated this to make it uh, even, but you can see of all the optionable stocks, the average underlying price is $61.50. Average earnings per share growth is a minus 3%. Beta is about 1.42. Average across all indexes, ETFs, and optionable securities. It's a 1.56 average yield. And then we get into the volatilities. The average implied volatility right now across the markets for all optionable stocks is 0 0.97. The average 50 day volatility is 0.53. Okay, so let's take that. Let's take these averages and let's create a search. Let's just say in a single option strategy, long call, perhaps long put. We're going to use the long call. The first search we created is one for high IV. We went into the long call search, we cleared out all the filters. We set an expiration time frame of just 20 to 60 days, just to see only a few uh, results in this case. We put in our implied volatility to be greater than 1.25. The average right now is 0.97, so we're going 30% or so above the average for a high implied volatility. We're just going to look at one strike out of the money, again, just to narrow the results a little bit more. And we're going to look for the stock volatility to be greater than 0.95 or what some of you might call 95%, double, nearly double the average of 0.53. And to filter out some of the lower $2, $1 stocks and things of that nature, we're just going to look for stocks greater than $10. And I'm going to remove indexes and ETFs because a lot of the indexes and ETFs that came up on the search when I ran it, specifically the ETFs, were bearish. Uh, I'm sorry, two times bear, three times bear, or two times bull and three times bull. Okay, so we're just going to filter those out we're going to go with this base idea that high volatility, whether they, they were referring to stock volatility or implied, we're covering both bases here, well above the averages, 30%, roughly 50% above the average of the market right now. And what do we get? We're going to run it on November 9th. So we take our save search and power options. I use my historical tools and say, show me which trades, stocks that had an at, out of the money long call against them for that time frame would have appeared. And on November 9th, high volatility, we have 
Nicola, Co-Diagnostics, Jemiah Technologies, Tilray, Aurora Cannabis. Hey, we, we know where they're coming from. Tilray, Aurora, uh, and so forth. We know what they are coming from. GameStop, I don't know Mesoblast at all, Workhorse Group, and Cassava Sciences. These are the top sort of 10 or 15 that came up. We don't show all of the 27 or, or more that come up. We're just focusing on the top 15 sorted by desired sort results. Now, these were the stocks that matched it. We're going to ignore the call buying in this case, which was disastrous. We're just going to look at the stocks. These are the ones with high volatility and high implied volatility. And at December expiration, there were 11 stocks that came up because I used that instead of 15 because I used that one result per security. There were some duplicates. Out of the 11 stocks, seven declined. Nikola went from 1863 to 1375. It's a pretty fair drop. Co Diagnostics, 1149 to 1019. Jemiah Technologies, never saw this one, missed this boat. 16 up to 4251. That might have been part of a reverse split. I'm not sure. In any case, Tilray is down. ACB is down. Cardiff, up. Trillium down, GameStop up, 1149 to 1563, pretty nice. Mesoblast down, Sava down, 1016 to 804, about a 20% decrease. Workhorse 1896 goes up $4 to 2297. In any case, 63% over that 20 to 40 day time period with high implied volatility and high volatility, lost. 37% gained. The markets were up. In that same time period, QQQ was up 6.8%. SPX was up 4.1%. Buying the calls was still an average return of 2.1%. That's all based on the Jemaya, if it was actually a gain and not based on that as well. Not based, excuse me, um, on a reverse split. If it was an actual doubling in price, the option returned over 785%, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so. That was that one. What about the reverse? Let's take the reverse. We'll do the criteria. We're going to look for an implied volatility of less than 0.25. Same strikes out of the money, same time frame, run the search on the same day. We're going to put a historical volatility less than 0.27 or 27%. Stocks above 10, no indexes, no ETFs, one result per security. Okay. So we're going to get again our, our top 10, 12, 15 results. We've got Cena, Renaissance, Tiffany, Toyota, McDonald's. These all make sense of things we'd expect to see with a lower volatility. Uh, Toronto Dominion Bank, Waste Management, Berkshire Hathaway, for example. Now, what happens to our low volatility stocks with low implied volatility options? meaning that they're expected to go down in price because that consistently happens, right? If you have high IV, it goes up. If you have low IV, it goes down. Of those top 15, eight gained. 53% of the positions went up in price. Renaissance from 170. Oh, I'm sorry. That's, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Toyota, 139 to 153. Coolahan, 63 to 68. These aren't large movements, but they're still up. 107 to 110, and so forth. These two ones I have highlighted here in yellow had almost no move. Sina started at 42.77, ended at 42.53. Tiffany at 131.16, moved just to 131.26. So we have eight gainers, five declines, two changed less than 25%. Market was up the same, 6.8% for QQQ, 4.1%. Low volatility, just having a low volatility does not mean the stocks are going to go down. Having a high volatility, stock or implied volatility, does not mean the market's going to go up. It's more along the line, Chucks, of what you're saying. Higher IV points to an event or past historic stock fluctuation that means there is a higher inherent risk, especially when we're talking about the implied volatility as well. Okay, That's what we would look for in those scenarios. Okay, let's see here. I'm just seeing if there's some. Oh, William, that is it. Okay. Sorry about that. One second. Okay, so that's one. Okay, so I was just seeing if William's question was related to this, and it's not directly. 
um, in that case. Okay, good. So this is where I was going with that, is that I agree with you, Chuck. The high implied volatility is pointing more towards an event coming up or past fluctuation in the stock. Higher implied volatility means more inherent chance of future fluctuations on the position. Great for premium, great for selling, right? <laughs> Don't get me wrong on that, but it is not a direct indication that the stock is going up or down. Having a low volatility does not a direct indication that the stock's going down. When I entered Kraft, and then you know back in as the stock had moved up and it had a little pullback, Kraft still had lower volatility than most stocks at the September after the September drop. Okay, it was still down in this 0.3, 0 0.2% range, both historical and implied volatility, and it moved from 28 up to about 36. Doesn't mean that at all. Okay, so that's my sentiment on that. You can mention my name if you need to during your presentation uh, in that case. And I know this is a this is a minimal snapshot. I understand that. It's something I don't like to do. We just took one month of trading. We looked for extreme high volatility, high implied volatility, and you didn't see the numbers you expected. There were more losers on the high IV than there were gainers. We went with the low volatility and the low IV where you were expecting to see more losers. We weren't, Chuck, naturally, but you're... The other commenter was saying that you'd expect to see more losers, and we saw more winners. It's also based on market conditions. We ran this test, say, from September 1st to September 30th. Both high implied volatility and low implied volatility probably would have lost money as the market was pulling back. Didn't matter. One or two might have gone up, but it wasn't related to high IV or low IV. It was related to the market condition and the other technicals as well. 